Girls, so today we're going to look at our next model, which is the production possibility frontier. So if you'd just like to have your task checklist handy, as well as your learning textbook, and I'll talk about this model and how it works and all the key things that you need to know. So any questions, let me know um, after this, either email or on Teams. So our model, as we know, is called the Production Possibility Frontier. So PPF, or sometimes you might see it as PPC, which um, instead of Frontier, it's just called the Curve. So in this PowerPoint, we're going to look at what it is, why we use it, and the different components of it. So just a quick overview. This model um, it will be in your exam, and it shows us economic growth. So it's really important to understand how you can use this model and the different changes that will happen in the model. You'll most likely be asked to show a change, um, whether that is moving the curve or moving the X that you can see there somewhere in the curve as well. So it's used to illustrate combinations of two goods that can be produced in the economy. So as we all know, we can't have everything that we want. So this model looks at what an economy can produce, assuming it only, assuming it uses all of its available resources. So you can make consumer goods, which we use now. So those are things such as clothes, um, food, all the things that we use in the, in the instant future. Um, or capital goods, which we can define as being a durable good that is used in the production of other goods and services. So for example, a tractor would be a capital good, and that tractor helps um, grow vegetables, which would be a consumer good. So capital goods are very future orientated, and they help us produce the consumer goods. And consumer goods we use now in the immediate future. So this is, these are the two items that we usually use for our production possibility curve. And it's used to illustrate the combinations of goods that can be produced. And it does assume that there's a fixed level of resources and technology. So if we look at the New Zealand market, or the New Zealand economy, um, and we think about all the different resources we have that we could possibly use, uh, there's a tractor, we've got all the machinery, all the food, all the clothes, all the people, all the land, all the labor. Okay, so we're looking at if we utilized all of those things, we could produce everything that we possibly want to. So how is it used to show us growth? So we've got different combinations where we could exist on this curve. The curve itself, so that black line that you see between capital goods and consumer goods, that's full utilization. That means if we did use all of our people, all of our land, all of our resources, all of our capital goods, all of our technology, if every single person in New Zealand was working, um, all of our equipment was being used, then we could produce everything completely possible that's where we would sit on that black line. And then that, that could be in a combination between capital goods or consumer goods. So if we were all working just to create goods that we consumed now, we would be further along the curve down towards consumer goods. But if we used all of our goods, um, all of our resources, and we had a lot more capital goods, so technology and factories and things like that, then we would sit up closer towards capital goods. So anywhere on that curve we call full utilization. So that is a term that you'll need to know. And it's not very often that we actually, in any, con any country's economy, um, is fully utilized. Because if you think about... Full utilization means that every single person is working. They're using all their labor. 
every single piece of machinery is being used every single bit of land is being used to produce goods okay so we're not actually we don't often utilize absolutely everything for this to occur the next part that um, the next area that most likely we do sit is underutilization so this is anywhere underneath the curve and again if it's more capital goods or more consumer goods this is where we would sit um, just depending on what we are producing at that time and third third way that we could be um, which is impossible is we can't operate outside the curve so that's saying that um, for example you might have enough resources to create um, let's say a thousand pieces of broccoli if you're on a farm but we don't have we only have that much resources that many resources and that much labor to produce so it's impossible for us to produce 2000 for example but we look at the whole economy which we call the aggregate so being outside the curve is impossible because we don't have enough resources to even create that output So how does it work and how can we make, how can we shift on this curve? So let's say, for example, we were at the black X. We could move closer towards the curve, which we call moving closer to full utilization. And we can do that through increasing productivity. So if we, for example, um, upskill as a person, then our output is going to increase. Therefore, we are being more fully utilized so that output might be in a factory so now the factory can create more resources or more goods for sale and so if one factory did that and then overall maybe everybody upskilled in that whole factory and then all the factories did that so overall in New Zealand our output would increase and we use a measure called real GDP to measure that. So GDP stands for gross domestic product, and it is the value of the output that an economy produces. So the value of goods. So if we increase that value, we are increasing our productivity, which means we would shift towards the curve. And now the next part we need to look at is are we creating more capital goods or are we creating more consumer goods? So depending on the situation, um, our output might have increased more towards capital goods. So then that would be that first arrow moving upwards more towards capital goods. Or perhaps we're putting our resources and labor and land into creating more food. So that would move that bottom arrow, that bottom cross, um, towards closer towards consumer goods, but it's also moving closer towards the curve. Or it could be pretty balanced and um, that's represented by that middle cross where it's in between. So the key components that are involved in the production possibility curve, we have capital goods and we have consumer goods. So you need to make sure that you know the difference between those two. You need to know how does this model show us employment? So if we were thinking about utilization of all of our resources, the closer we move towards the curve, remember we are fully utilizing all of our resources and labor is one of those. So the more people that are employed working, the closer we are moving towards the curve. If we look right now at the situation in New Zealand, there's probably a lot of people that aren't working, or well, there is a lot of people that aren't working, and they might not return to work. So actually we might be moving the opposite way and we might be moving further towards the center of the graph. So we're 
even um, we're not utilizing our resources at all we're lessening that utilization therefore unemployment is increasing so on that next question where would employment be fully utilized so the answer to that if it was fully utilized that means that every single person in this country is working to their fullest capacity therefore we would be able to sit on the curve same with resources if all the resources were being utilized we would sit on the curve and then the next question you need to look at or you need to know is how could we shift the curve so if we can only operate on the curve and that's fully utilizing all of our resources um, we could actually increase all of those resources and push the whole curve outward so that would be showing economic growth our whole economy is growing so a shift would look like this the whole curve would shift outward so this would show an increase in economic growth okay so that would also represent um, an increase in real GDP because our output the value of output has increased so how could we possibly create more so the reasons why this happens is if there is an increase in either more resources so more land more labor or new technology to both of the goods to both consumer goods and capital goods equally to push it outward so if we look at an improved technology that allows more of both goods to be produced with the existing resources that would be an example of how the curve would shift but then what we can do is only apply extra resources or technology to one of the goods whether it's capital goods or consumer goods and then the curve would only shift on one of those areas so the first graph the top graph shows us that technology has been increased only for consumer goods so now consumer goods has been shifted outward but our capital goods still remain the same and then vice versa that bottom graph we've added new technology which is increasing our productivity output only to capital goods therefore capital goods has been pushed outward because we can produce more our economy is growing just in that area but consumer goods have remained the same so it's really important to know all of these different shifts um, whether it's an equal shift or it's a shift on just one of the goods as well as it could be a shift on both the goods your next step that you need to think about is relating it back to economic growth so we use the measure called GDP we'll look at this more later on so GDP is going to increase therefore the economy is growing um, so you just make sure that you've got that flow on effect all the way through okay so going back to our task checklist this relates to the second page on our task checklist um, so you should complete your notes please on page 94 to 99 and then practice those questions um, as well in your learning textbook send me your answers send me a picture and any questions let me know and i'll see you later thank you